young ones here this morning. That was a great, great to see them. And Sunday school is opening back up. So if you have kids, grandkids, you want to bring them, just have at it. Praise the Lord. We're, we're ready to just start having church and get all the rest of this mess. Praise the Lord. Sure. Praise God. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Great job, Tim. I mean, that was just that was fantastic. Really set the tone for what God is wanting to do and what we want to do with the Lord. Amen. And Suzanne and Mike is always just such a blessing. And thank you, Suzanne, for last week uh, stepping up. Just a great message. If you didn't get to see it or hear it, you can archive it, get it off of the uh, internet there. And I was able to watch it live, and it was fantastic. She did a really great job. She always does, but it was just, it was really a good message. Grateful to them for yes. taking care of that, and uh, it's great. Praise the Lord, and thank you to Suzanne again, and Tammy, and Jody for leading us in worship. Praise God. It's great. God is good. Yes. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm excited about what's coming. I mean, I know there's a lot of things to be concerned about in the natural, but I'm telling you, when it gets dark, Light shines bright. Yeah. God's going to shine like never before. And we're going to get to see. Amen. We're going to get to be part of it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all remember when Hayden Fry was uh, Iowa's football coach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Well, I was addicted to the hokey pokey back then. <laughs> but thankfully, I turned myself around. That hurts, doesn't it, Dan? Okay, well, what happens when you throw a green rock into the Red Sea? Uh -oh. It gets wet. <laughs> I want you all to remember that you're unique, just like everybody else. <laughs> and here's some good advice in closing here. If at first you don't succeed, Skydiving is probably not for you. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. And he's always in a good mood. Because yes. he knows the end. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to I do something a little bit different this morning. And this, uh, but I really feel the Lord wants us to. And uh, I want to read Psalms 107. The entire psalm. Thank you, Mike. And... I want you to pay close attention, if you can see the scriptures up here, I want you to look and read them and recognize what God is really saying to us through the Psalms. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's for a time such as this, yes, yes. that this Psalms, I've been, the last couple of weeks I've been reading through the Psalms and uh, something I, I used to do frequently, especially when there was a lot of pressure and a lot of issues going on because it, Psalms have a way of just lifting you up, encouraging. All scripture does, but especially in the Psalms. Yeah. David struggled with so many things, and uh, and the words that he spoke come from his heart, and you can tell yes. that it was, even with the negative things, it always come back to a positive. Right. God was in charge. God's going to take care of this. I don't care how screwed up it gets, how bad it looks. Mm -hmm. God's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Mm -hmm. So I want to read this, and it's, it's lengthy. It's the entire psalm, but I think it's, what the Lord wants me to do, at least. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. And gathered them out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Yes. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. 
He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in thunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down in the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, and they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. Yes. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. Yes. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Amen. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water, and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. Yes. And sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Yeah. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes, and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it, and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Mm -hmm. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness yes. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I think we ought to just stand. Yes as a congregation and praise the Lord. That's what he asked for. That's what he wants. He wants us to praise him and believe that good is going to come. That good is proud. That good will prevail over evil. That God will prevail over the enemy. And that we will prevail in righteousness because of him. In Jesus' name. Father, we just praise you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we have the victory in you. That nothing be able to stop us. Amen. From presenting Christ and Him glorified in this earth. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We praise you for your mighty acts, your works of kindness and mercy toward us. And we know that they shall prevail. And we shall prevail because of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. We declare the victory right now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us can prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against us, you will condemn. We are the children of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And we will prevail. We have prevailed. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The victory is ours. It's already won. It was won 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we claim it today in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, whatever we're facing with, whatever you're facing, you need to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. He, he's given us the victory. And we will walk in it. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Ilaba Hoshaka Tane Lavahashia. Ilaba Tane Lavahashia. Hey, Kot Tane Lavahashia. Kala Lavahake. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 7, or excuse me, chapter 55, verse 7 through 13. I've used these scriptures before, but the Lord really has laid this on my heart over the last week, and I just feel like we're in the will of God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let the wicked forsake his way. I just heard this the other day. You know what that word means? Wicked. It means twisted. It, it's the same word used for wicker furniture. See wicker furniture, how it's wrapped all up. So he says, let the twisted, or the twisted thinking people, yeah. forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. He's speaking to our flesh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Yes. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Yes. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Yes. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Yes. Praise God. Yes, yes, Lord. I want to just quickly say hello and welcome the people that are online and are watching us through Facebook and that I apologize for I got caught up man I mean sometimes praise the Lord it just happens hallelujah but we're, we're grateful to have you be a part of the service and, and you are amen in spirit and, and we're uh, praise the Lord glad to have you with us and hope you're shouting right where you're at as well praise the Lord there's no distance with the spirit praise the Lord so you can be experiencing the same thing we are praise God 
But here, back to the, the opening scriptures here. I just had a crazy thought. I just had a thought out of the blue. You wouldn't believe what I just thought. <laughs> Have you ever said anything like that? Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard somebody else say something like that? Wow, I just thought it. I just had the craziest thought. <laughs> well, all of those statements indicate that we are sometimes surprised by our own thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Think about this. Your thoughts are proceeding along this orderly kind of path. And then all of a sudden comes a thought that isn't part of the pattern that you've been thinking about. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you say, I just thought of something. Yes. You see, our speech is filled with phrases that say we have, we, all of us, we have random thoughts. They just come seemingly from nowhere. Yeah. We're, we're focused on one thing and then all of a sudden something comes in and you go, yeah. what the heck was, what's that? What was that about? Yeah. And we have them, these random thoughts, seemingly for no real reason. So what effect does our thought life have on this physical world and the spiritual world? How does the spiritual world interact with the physical world? What's the usual ordinary way that that happens? And even more specifically, how does God minister to us as people? How does he minister his love to us, whether directly or indirectly? Doesn't he do it through our mind? If God wants to minister his love to me directly, he usually does it by putting thoughts in my mind as I let him. I've told you this story before, but several years ago I was here praying, and I was kneeling here, and crying and praying, struggling with what was going to happen and how we were going to do things and so on and so forth. And the Lord said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It was a random thought. I wasn't thinking it. I didn't, in fact, I had to stop yes. and think, what the heck? Yes. Am I just quoting a scripture? Yeah. No, it was the Lord planted a thought in my head. Yeah. But I had to receive it as such. Because my first instinct was, you know, what's this? Yes. Another time I was really in a battle, spiritually speaking, in the, over the church and some things that were going on at the time when I, I heard the Lord say, because I, I didn't know what to do. I, I thought, I can't handle this. This is... This is too much. Amen. And he said, I am thy shield. Yes. And exceeding great yes. reward. Yes. Yes. Yep. And I receive those thoughts. If I'm going to receive those thoughts, I have to act on them. Yeah. I experience his love when I act on that, when I receive it, accept it, and then act on it. <laughs> See, the psychology of perception says we succeed in listening only if we respond in some way to what we hear. Right? Yeah. I mean, you can sit in the classroom. I've done this in school, and probably we all have, and I'm hearing stuff, but I'm not responding. Right. So I really didn't hear. Because when that class is over, I've got to find somebody else that took notes. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't know what was said, right? Yeah. You've got to respond to what you hear to really hear it, for it to really be true to you. And if God wants to speak to me through somebody else, if he wants to do something for me through somebody else, he would usually put a thought in that person's mind about something to say or to do, right? If that person receives it and obeys or acts on it, I'm ministered to by God, but through another person. Amen? Amen. That's how, he, that's how God does it. Yes, yes. That's so now, how does the devil get his stuff done? How does he slander a person? How does he murder somebody? Well, i got to tell you, from personal experience, I've never seen the devil slander anybody or murder anybody personally, directly. Right. But there are lots of people that are harmed by other people after the devil has put some evil idea yeah. in their mind. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So then based on that premise, the first step of the spiritual world's interaction with the physical world is usually by a thought. Yes. A thought that's placed in the mind of a person. Yeah. It's usually not by audible sounds that I hear the Lord. No. It's a thought. Yeah. 
I didn't hear an audible voice when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It was as real as an audible voice, but it was a thought. It was just a, a vivid thought. So he communicates in our thought life and through the Holy Spirit interpreting or interpretation of scriptures. Right? Look at, let's look at John chapter 16, verses 12 and 13. John 16, verses 12 and 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Why? Because you didn't have the Holy Spirit. This is all just intellect, right? Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. Well, he won't speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. It's the Holy Spirit in us that allows God to speak to us yes. in our thoughts, right? right? Praise God. So it's important then that we have to understand certain basic things about our thought life. Now, I, I can be obsessive over things like this, because I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and we've talked about this before, and I'm sure all of you do the same thing. And I'll be so absorbed in a thought, in a thing, that I can't shake it, and I can't go back to sleep. I can't, so I have, to, I have to start praying. I have to start praying yes. in tongues. And a lot of times, it's the Lord. Sometimes it's the enemy just trying to put fear on me, but sometimes it's the Lord just trying to get my attention because I'm so busy screwing around with everything else during the day that I didn't hear it. Right. Yeah. Amen. I didn't catch the thought that he was trying to give me. Or I just saw it as a random thought and just kept on going. Yeah. Amen. It's natural and it's scriptural for God because he lives inside our minds and our hearts. Yes. Yes. Amen. In our thought world. Yes. That's where God lives. Amen. We use all sorts of metaphorical things, you know, the heart of the man and so on and so forth. We know it's not in our blood pump. We know that's not where he's at. He's in our innermost being. What is our innermost being? Our thoughts. Yeah. What we think. Amen. Our thoughts produce our attitudes. Yeah. It's possible to be fearful. We all know this. It's possible to be afraid when there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Right. You know, and likewise, it's possible to be unafraid yeah. when there's things that you shouldn't be afraid of. Right. Amen. Our thought produces attitudes. Amen. And it's simply our thinking, the wrong thoughts, yeah. amen, that create wrong feelings, right. wrong right. attitudes. Right. It's possible to be at peace even when there's danger. Right. We've all experienced both of those things, yeah. both sides of that coin. Our thoughts precede our attitudes, whether or not there's any reality to them or not. In other words, I can have an attitude today right. over a thought that has no reality to it whatsoever, right. except in my mind. I just right. heard it, believed it, and so now I respond, and my attitude is affected by that, yes. and so is everybody else that comes into contact yes. with my attitude. Yeah. Right. Amen? Before we do anything, we think. Before we act, we yeah. think. Now, it might be a split-second response to a thought. Yeah. Or it might be a long gap between the time you think the thought and you actually act on it. Mm -hmm. Amen? But always, the thought process comes before an action. Yes. Yes, it does. The enemy's attack consists basically by placing untrue thoughts in our mind yes. and calling them true. Yes. So that we will live according to his purpose yeah. and his desire. Uh -huh. The only power he has over us is through our thoughts. Right. Yes. Right. Inevitably, we become whatever it is we're thinking about all day. Mm -hmm. True. Yep. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, or excuse me, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Remember, he said the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. Yeah. Amen. So the key is that as we're looking at Jesus, the Lord is working a step-by-step -step transformation yes. in each one of us. Hallelujah. Yeah. If we want to be like him, yep. 
then we've got to understand our thought life, and we've got to learn how to control it. Yep. Listen, I've been out there where I, I did all sorts of things so I wouldn't have thoughts, or the thoughts that I had wouldn't matter. Right. You know, getting high, getting drunk, whatever it might be. Yep. You still have thoughts, but they're so scrolled up and, yep. and, and twisted that you don't really pay that much attention to them. Right. It's an escape. Right. It's a way of escaping the thoughts. Yep. Amen? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When you can say, into agreement with his word. He and his word are one. I'm an old science class, Mr. Sanders. Mr. Sanders. Sanders. I don't remember Mr. Sanders. I remember Mr. Sanders. Actually, Sanders was an uncle of mine, but nevertheless. I just remember he had really long hair growing off the top of his nose. Strange guy, but brilliant, you know? Just totally unaware of his physical being. He was a great teacher. But he'd ask you questions like things like, is it possible he'd have a glass of beer? He'd say, is it possible to get all that air out of the glass? And of course, we're freshmen, sophomores in high school. And we go, mm -hmm. <laughs> Who cares? You know, I mean, why? Of course it is. You fill the glass with water, nothing left. But what? The air is forced out, right? So can we ever bring every thought captive? Yes. You gotta fill your mind with something else, yeah. with a different thought, with other thoughts. The principle is the same as filling the glass with water to get rid of the air. Now we can't choose not to think. And we can't think two thoughts at the same time. But we can choose what thoughts are in our mind. Thoughts can be divided into two categories, true and false. Lots of things, but the bottom line is it's either true or it's not true. The thoughts that come from God are true, period. Look at John 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto, send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which is the Spirit of God, which proceeded from the Father, he will testify of me. He's the spirit of truth. Yeah. Titus chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And he and his word are one. Right? Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie right. promised, before the world began. He's the God of all truth. And he sent his Holy Spirit, his spirit, to live in us and to guide us into all truth. Because he's the spirit of truth. Amen. That's how he opens the scripture to us. That's how he makes it come alive to us. That's why we believe it and non-believers don't believe it. Because they don't have the spirit of truth. So it stands to reason if I can receive God's thoughts... I can think the truth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. How do I get rid of wrong, untrue thoughts? By filling my mind with true and right thoughts from God. Right. Right. So the control of our thought life comes by thinking God's thoughts with him, with agreement yes. with the Holy Spirit. Yes. John 4, verse 14. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. And now verse 20 through 23. This is, you know the story. This is Jesus met the woman at the well, right? Mm -hmm. Our father, she says this. She says, our father's worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, woman, believeth me, the hour comes when you will neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You will worship 
you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen? Now remember, conscious mind is like a glass that's filled with thoughts. So the subconscious mind is like a, a reservoir, like a, a deep well. Amen? And all the streams of our past experiences, all of the knowledge that we have accumulated, whether it's true or false, that gets fed into our subconscious. Amen? A well is what it amounts to. And look at Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. What did Jesus say? If you had come to me, I'd have given you waters that never end. Right. Amen? And out of your belly would flow yes. things, right? Yes. But he said, don't go to that well. I've got a well that you need to come to have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can't hold water. That's right. Praise God. We've all received false information, mm -hmm. and it was fed into our subconscious, whether it was religious, whether it was secular, it doesn't matter, just information, just knowledge. And when you think, when, when I think, so that I can act, I go to the well of my thought. And I bring up anything that's related to that situation. It's in my subconscious. Amen? So whatever's in the well, whatever's in my subconscious, is going to come up to my conscious, including truth, falsehood, or untruth, which has a mixture of truth and untruth. Again, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. And this is what Jesus is referring to with this woman. Because she had it all screwed up. She said, no, they, we're, we're supposed to be worshiping here, but you're saying we worship there. She had false information that had been fed into her subconscious as far as she was concerned, it was true. And that's why what he was saying, he's saying, look, you need, you need to quit going to that subconscious mm -hmm. of yours and come to the consciousness of yeah. God. Yeah. Because that's where the well springs of life. Are, are, are going to come. That's where truth is going to come from. Not in your subconscious, because we don't know where half the junk was that we received. Right. Right. Casting down imaginations, again, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the right. obedience of Christ. Right. Regardless of where it came from and how far back it came, right. it, needs to, it needs to align with the Word of God, yes. or it's false. Yes. It's yes. bad yes. information. Right. It's bad water coming up right. that's going to pollute the consciousness. Amen? And so, now we, we have the truth. We've got the truth in us. Jesus said, I'm going to put it in your, God said, I'll put it in your hearts. Yes. So we have the truth in us. And the word of truth is available to us. Yes. The more subconscious, the more our subconscious is filled with truth, the easier it is to live spiritually. That's why, he's, that's why he said, don't let this word depart from your mind. Because if you can stay focused on this, you're going to be operating in agreement with me. You're going to be walking in truth. You're going to get the results that you're looking for because you're going to believe it. Amen? Look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Boy, isn't this a time that we'd want to not be conformed? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind or your subconscious. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Not to everybody else, because you've got to prove it to yourself first before you can have any benefit to anybody else, right? Amen? So there's all kinds of ways to receive new thoughts. There's all kinds of ways to get new information, right? But there's only two basic sources, two basic kinds of new information. God who gives truth without error, or the devil who gives a distorted, erroneous truth, amen, through deception. Amen. Yep. I said, bottom line, it's either coming from God or it's coming from the enemy. Yes. Right. Amen? That's and so, look at Isaiah 1, verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 1, 
Isaiah 1, verse 18 and 19. Come now, let us reason together. This is God. Now he said, let's get our heads yep. in sync. Get my thoughts and your thoughts. Let's get them to work together, right? Let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as new, or white as so. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Right? He's talking about his word. It's through reasoning that we come to certain interpretations, you know, what we think, what we know. And what we perceive. That's, it's reasoning that does that. Right. We start to reason yeah, that, we this, we start sorting, right? Yeah. The problem is, a lot of the times, the interpretations are inaccurate because of the information. Yeah. Right? If I've got bad information and I'm basing my reasons and my actions on that, I'm going to have bad actions. I'm going to have bad results. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Right. So. Since we don't know our information is wrong, we're sure it's correct. The result is wrong reasoning. Let me give you a couple of really simple, basic examples. Look in Mark chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 through 12. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The familiar story, we've all heard it and quoted and read it and preached on it and everything else, but Again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Straightway, many were gathered there together, insomuch that there was no room to receive him, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born and poor. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where it was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Reasoning. <laughs> Why did this man thus speak? Blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but only God? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Or where are you, how are you coming to these conclusions? <laughs> Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up your bed and walk. Yeah. But that ye might know that the Son of Man has power on the earth to forgive yes. sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. All right, let's go back to verse 5, and I want to go 5 through 8. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? The scribe's conclusion was wrong because one of their facts was wrong. They didn't recognize Jesus was God. Yeah. And so they had, he had the right to forgive sin. Yeah. Right. Amen? Their reasoning was wrong. Yes, was. So they came to the wrong conclusion. Yeah. And they missed an opportunity for a miracle for themselves. Yeah. And to see and know God in the flesh. Yes. Yes. Now let me show you, that's, that's wrong reasoning and the results of wrong reasoning. Let me show you now a simple right reasoning and the results of that. Romans chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Remember, these reasonings are all coming because of information, either good information, true information, or false information. It's all information, and there's only two kinds, true or false. Godly or demonic. Right. So as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. God said. Before whom, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope, 
that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And not being, or being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not at the information coming from God. Amen. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Yeah. All right? Abraham reasoned that no matter what the other facts in the situation were, he and Sarah were going to have a child because God said so. Yes. Yes. Now look at uh, Hebrews 11, 11. Through faith, also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Yes. Now, you know, we get hung up in the confessions and so forth, and it almost becomes a religious right. Yeah. But I'm trying to show you naturally in the, just using language. Just God had this set. It was established. And if, if we're not thinking the right thoughts, we're not going to be saying the right things because our words are the result of our thoughts just like our actions are. Yeah. So don't tell me, you know, you give me this negative, 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 and then tell me I'm confessing. You're wasting your time. You're coming to false conclusions because your reasoning is screwed up. You're not basing your reasonings on facts, on true facts. Amen. So here's the mathematical formula. God's promise plus Abraham's old age plus Sarah's barren womb equals we're going to have a child. <laughs> right? right? I mean, we simplify it. That's what we're dealt with. That's what we're left with here. Yeah. <laughs> that was Abraham's reasoning. That's how he reasoned this thing out to that conclusion was because he said it. It's true. Yeah. The facts that I got, they're true. Even if it doesn't look like it's true. Even if the other things look more true than that. These facts are the real facts. These are the true facts. These are what's going to get me what it is I want. Yes. And what God has promised. Yes. So look, Philippians chapter 4 yes. and verse 8. Yes. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Now we know what the truth is. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Amen. whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes. Yes. Not Fox News, no. not CNN, no. not whatever. Oh, so in life's equations, the positive factor of God's truth and promises cancels out the negative elements and brings a correct interpretation yes, yes. to our reasoning. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. John 8:32. Stop pie in the sky. This is this is see, he gave us a brain. Yep. It's not wrong to use your intellect. It just needs to be, it just needs to be in agreement with his intellect. Yes. We need to think with him. We need to think the way he thinks. Yes. So he, you shall know the truth, yeah. and the truth is going to make you free. Yeah. Free of what? Free of the lies. Free of the deceit. Yeah. Free of the fear. Free of the stress. Free of, of, of whatever the devil is lying to us about. Yes. Whatever we're seeing on around us. Yes. Praise the Lord. John 1, 1. Remember, Jesus and the Word, they're, they're the same. They're one yes. thing. Yes. So in the beginning was the Word. The word is with God. The word was God. Yes. Right? Yes. And verse 14. Yes. That's what we saw. That's the information that we got. And here's what we reasoned. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We saw he was God yes. in the flesh. Yes. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of what? Grace, Grace and truth. Amen. That's the truth, church. Anything else yes. that contradicts that is a lie. Yes. It's coming yes. from the enemy. Yes. Praise right. the Lord. Amen. That's the end of it all. We have no control over how we feel, 
how we act, our attitudes and actions, except as they are determined by our thoughts. Yes. Right? I mean, you can't stop the, you know, the reasoning that comes from bad thoughts. If you're thinking those thoughts, you're going to get results, and the results are going to be negative. Right. Yep. And you can't unthink them. You can't, no. you have to, look, we act based on our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And we get attitudes based on those thoughts. Yeah. We get feelings yeah. based on those thoughts. Yeah. And the only way that we can eliminate the wrong is that our thoughts are in agreement with God. The elements are completely tied together. You can't disassociate actions from thoughts. You can't disassociate feelings from thoughts. You can't disassociate attitudes from thoughts. So you want to know what you're thinking is right. Or you're going to have a lot of bad feelings and a bad, like bad actions and attitudes over stuff that aren't even real. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But since we do have control over what we think, yeah. it's possible to control our attitudes, our feelings, yeah. and our actions. Yes. You know, we talked about this. That's what I'm saying. I'm reading the Psalms. Why? Because it affects my attitude. Yes. It affects my feelings. Yes. It affects yes. my yes. thoughts. Yes. Therefore, it affects my actions. Yes. Jesus. It's possible to control our attitudes and our actions. Yes. Just get your thoughts right. Yes. In the Marine Corps, they used to say, you know, you're, I can't say what they said, but I'll, I'll come close. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big yeah. up. Get your head and the other end wired together, amen, so that you can do what you're supposed to be doing here. Yeah. We need to get our head and yes. wired. We need to get our spirit and our mind wired together yes. so we're functioning the way God created us to function. Yes. Otherwise, we're no better than the lost. Yes. Except that when we die, we'll go to heaven. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. If I can think true thoughts, I can have the right kind of attitudes. If I can think true thoughts, I can have the right kind of actions. They'll be right. Not because I'm wonderful, not because I'm such a great guy, but because however I think is how I'm going to behave, how I'm going to act, how I'm going to respond to things. Amen. Yes. It's in thinking God's thoughts with him that I'm able to think true thoughts and then come to correct conclusions, mm -hmm. true, right conclusions. And the result of that, my actions will be in agreement with God's actions. If you think about it, that's exactly what Jesus was telling us. I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. I'm in total agreement with the way he thinks. I'm th he's thinking with me and I'm thinking with him. And my, the result is I'm getting positive results here because I'm in total agreement with God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans 10 verse 17. Now faith. Faith comes by hearing, yes. and hearing by the Word of God. Yes. Not by the news, not by what we're seeing, right. not by what we're hearing, not even by what we're feeling. Right. That's right. And by this, we can receive every promise of God's Word, in spite of circumstances, in spite of situations, in spite of attitudes, right. and in spite of feelings. Right. Those are all flesh. Is. And they want to dominate. Yep. But he said, those that are my children walk by the Spirit, yes. Yes. not by the flesh. Because mm -hmm. you're going to get results either way. Yep. So let's base our actions on the truth. Yeah. Let's, base, let, let's base our thoughts on the truth. Let's base our feelings and our attitudes on the truth. And listen, we're going to be a lot easier to love one another, a lot easier to cooperate with God, a lot easier to see the manifestations of God in this earth, because that's how Jesus did it, and it worked. I don't let anything control my attitude. You don't control my attitude. You don't control my feelings. You don't control the results of my life. God does. As long as I'm in agreement with him, I'm going to get what God has. I'm going to say what God says. I'm going to see what God sees. And I'm going to get the results that God gives us. I'm going to get the promises that God has given us. Can you say amen? amen. Give the Lord a hand. It's all about what comes in.
Because what goes in is coming out somewhere. Yeah. Jesus said it isn't what goes into a man, right. it's what comes out yes. that defiles. That's right. Yes. Praise the Lord. We need to get the right stuff in so that the right stuff comes out. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Yes. Walk in the reasoning of yes. God. Yes. And don't let this world confuse you and distort no. your yes. truth in Jesus' name. Right. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a great day.